This is my wallpaper, and I've changed this uh, both in Linux and Windows. Here I use something called Wallpaper Engine, and I absolutely love this wallpaper. You just can't beat it. And a lot of people are like, well, that's uh, a lot of wasted resources, and it really doesn't take up much resources. I'll pull up Task Manager here with just a Control Shift Escape, and then let's go ahead and take a look at the wallpaper engine. I'm gonna scroll all the way down, and here is wallpaper engine right there. It takes up roughly 20 megs of memory and less than 1% CPU. There's no real ongoing resource heaviness to it, and if we just minimize, or uh, take this so you can see that work, and that way it's running kinda of like in the background because it does have some really neat tools in it, specifically, when you're looking at this, when you run in a game or something like that, there's an actual option when we go into wallpaper settings here to actually say, hey, if this application's focused, go ahead and pause wallpaper engine. So yes, it is very, very lightweight. As you see right here, it's not really taking up anything. You got the UI 32s right here as well. So it does take up a little more than what I just said, but not much. It's not really using any, I don't see any performance loss. And then when I run a game or application at full screen right here, other application full screen, it pauses it anyways. So it keeps this smooth, fluent, uh, just a nice aesthetic. You know, I always say be comfortable and, and also enjoy the desktop you're in. And this makes it much more pleasant for me. And I'll read it, boot into Linux just so you can see it over there as well. But before we do that, I want to create our own wallpaper because sometimes you don't want just the stock ones because there's a lot of uh, anime and other stuff that I just don't care about in here. But if we take a look and we just hit change wallpaper, the community has made a whole bunch of different things and there's some really cool ones that I've personally enjoyed. Sometimes I don't want an active wallpaper and I want just a visualizer for like, let's say I'm playing music in the background, I can go ahead and put a meter in and then it'll just have wavelengths there. I'll go ahead and grab this for you so you can kind of see that. This will play when I play music uh, overhead and you'll see the wavelengths. I'll go ahead and play a little bit of copyright free music and we'll go ahead and just use this chill step here. So that is just kind of a cool little visualizer, something that I like. So if you're a music person out there, you could do this. Uh, Doc's what I've been using. You guys have probably seen a lot of my other ones that I've done in previous live streams and also videos. And to show you the next one, I'm gonna go ahead and reboot into Linux so you can see it over there. All right, it boots right in. One thing I will notice about Linux, it is a little bit more lightweight as long as you're using KDE. If you're using like GNOME or another desktop environment, this probably is not gonna work for you. But for me, I love KDE. It's mainly what I use these days. And I can just configure desktop wallpaper, select wallpaper engine from KDE, and then you have this. And we can refresh this and even uh, download more ones uh, if you so desire. I will say the actual tinkering and selection from here isn't great in Linux. A lot of times I find myself booting back into Windows, configuring everything, downloading the stuff I like to use, and then coming back into my Linux install. I know that's not ideal for many, uh, and I'll probably find some kind of workaround to that that's not quite as cumbersome. But Having said that, let's get back to Windows. I just kind of wanted to show this aspect of it for you Linux folks out there. And on startup, you can see it goes ahead and installs all this and, oh heck, my ASUS is installing some kind of service, yay. Thanks Windows. <laughs> but continuing on past this, I wanted to do a little bit more and actually create our own. Let's say you're a hardcore gamer and you kind of want to create a scene. Now, what I did is I captured a good screenshot and tried to get at least a minute to two minutes and uh, try and pick something that where the scene doesn't change too much and I can uh, don't have any weird blips. Let's say if I catch it at the wrong time, I don't want it to be too jarring. So what I did was created about a two to three minute MP4 file of gameplay and I put it in here 
It's just this test cyber. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. This just kind of shows you what I did. You got a little bit of a, a movement, head cam movement. I could crop this in a little bit and do some more edits. But for this, I just kind of want to show you the power of it. So I'm, I'm looking at like the different actors as you see like that, that lady walking in the background. We'll probably see some cars move through. But it's a, a good two minute chunk here of that. And you can kind of see what happens as, as it goes along. And this is obviously, you're not gonna be sitting here just looking at your desktop but then it's gonna recycle back and come right back into here. So that will be a little jarring with the shadow, so I should have planned this out a little bit better. But for today's video, I just wanna show this as a test of some sample recording gameplay. And obviously I hid all the HUD and all that with Cyberpunk. So we're gonna go ahead and make that wallpaper. Just hit Create Wallpaper. We'll drag and drop our test Cyberpunk file onto it to have that Cyberpunk background. And we'll just drag and drop that in there. And you can choose the, the scheme color if you want it. I'd probably go like, like a green almost, or maybe a blue, something not too harsh, but more suiting to a cyberpunk theme. But for now, I guess I'll just go black, just so we don't have anything too crazy. That gives us the preview. That looks pretty good. I do have that steam pop up, so we'd probably want to trim that out. And we'll just hit, hit apply wallpaper. And now we'll close out of this, and we have our wallpaper, just like this. Uh, big things to look at, just make sure you have cohesion in the background, because this will loop. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but it's a very neat tool to where you can go ahead and capture whatever you want, and then still have your full functional desktop right at your fingertips while this is playing in the background, and again, it is really not taking up too many resources. So I uh, will say one thing about uh, Wallpaper Engine, it is $4 on Steam, but it does have a very strong community. It's been out for a couple years now. And if we look at Wallpaper Engine, uh, it does get quite a few updates. You see big updates. Uh, last one was in December, 2020, but you can do all kinds of craziness and, and change like light sources. I'll probably make one like a CTT logo and then just have the light switch through and fade in and out uh, as that would be a, like another neat wallpaper uh, design but here it is this looks like it's about to switch let's see how jarring this is if we're just sitting here staring at the wallpaper and i believe i cut right in here somewhere i know it's going to be pretty jarring because it didn't take very much time you'd probably want to capture an entire day cycle so it'll cycle in and out and it won't have this jarring effect, which we're about to see, I think, any second now. Yeah, and there you go. You saw that. Boom. And honestly, if you have windows up and other stuff, you're probably not going to notice it too much. But just be cognizant when you're creating your own files like that. Uh, and this is actually one other feature of it. You saw it just kind of blank out. But if we actually go, you can actually set the screensaver, change screensaver, and it pulls up the same old screensaver design. So we can actually open up an editor. Let's see. And we can go settings preview. And then it brings up the old screensaver prompt. Most people don't even realize this is still here. But yes, this is the old screensaver. You don't need to use a screensaver per se. Obviously, it's kind of redundant with the moving wallpaper. But it's still fun. So you can actually configure a screensaver separate from your actual wallpaper and have all these cool tools that uh, it's kind of been lost over time and now refound. And I just love this. Even though it is $4 on Steam, I've really enjoyed this piece of software and the community behind it as you can just come in to discover and do all kinds of craziness and, and see what the community's done. I like a more natural wallpaper as I'm going to probably just switch back to my little C that I usually do. And I love the seashore. This is my favorite one. It's more warm and inviting, but choose yours wallpaper engine on steam. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.